afternoon here but they call this place the land of the noonday sun because really you don't uh, it looks like uh, uh, morning around 11 o'clock um, today curiously enough uh, comes from this little uh, not little well I guess I don't know whatever it's not gigantic um, <laughs> this passage in John where John meets uh, two of his disciples and there's a little uh, biblical humor going on here. Uh, ba -ba now Philip, of some, uh, Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. It's exciting, right? I mean, uh, however many thousands of years of uh, Judaic tradition, they're like, dude, it's the Messiah finally. Can you believe it? Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Ba boom I guess uh, Nazareth is kind of like the... Uh, Biblical Detroit. Uh, Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, the Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Which is funny considering he just totally slandered. But you know, he must have been one of those guys who was just like, Really? Um, Philip said to him, oh, Come and see. Uh, Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now, under the fig tree doesn't really mean anything other than, except it meant something to Nathaniel. Uh, and Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw under the fig tree, do you believe? You'll see greater things than the leaves. Uh, and he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. So, got two things from that. Numero uno. Here, I'm going to move over into the sun. I hope it doesn't kill this camera, but holy crap, it's a little chilly. Um, so two things I got out of that. Uh, numero uno was that uh, Christ was uh, God and Christ, and they're both the same. Uh, dig it, actually. Not perhaps when you're sarcastic and cruel, but uh, if you're honest. So if there is... Uh, Deceit. I mean, deceit can take many things. Deceit can be uh, literally lying to someone. It could be, you know, uh, withholding information. Uh, it can also be just in the way you, you answer uh, and honestly take in information. You know, I think too often I definitely... Not too often. I guess I probably was born with a little bit of this, and I'm trying to find a, a way to make it okay as well. <laughs> uh, that... Um, Instead of speaking pablum to people or like worrying about treading on people's toes, um, if anyone comes to you with problems or with with uh, with discussion on anything, if you don't really give them the honest answer, you give them the answer you think they want you to give, you've really helped nobody. Because for whatever reason, they came to you for for a reason, and if you give them uh, uh, nothingness, if you give them uh, you know pleiades, pleiades, plea what the heck is a pleiades? I think it's the star formation. Uh, but if you give them platitudes, you know, instead of truth, or instead of just even what you think, uh, nobody wins. So that's point A. Point B is, uh, I guess, about the omnipresence of God. Uh, and that Christ saw him elsewhere, before having ever met him, as like, I saw you under the fig tree. Now, that must have been a moment of trial, or a moment of prayer, or a moment of something, because it struck something in Nathaniel. He wasn't like, fig tree, fig tree, what in the world are you talking about? I got fig trees in my dad's backyard, but what, is, what does that have to do with anything? Plenty of people have fig trees. Not impressed. 
So that must have been a moment, a private moment of worship, of struggle, of prayer, of something, probably. Something that meant something to Nathaniel so that it would mean something. And that also tells you that um, be prepared to take, uh, sometimes Christ will be with you and telling you to do something, and then you do it. Scotty's going off to burn things at his property. Bye, Scotty. Night and day. I don't even know if you could see that, but uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, be prepared like a Boy Scout. Uh, take that. You can, you'll have times in your life when Christ is with you and God is with you. You can just feel Him just pulsing in you, and just and you're. It's so easy to be worshipful, and you, sometimes you can feel them when uh, when moments of strife are upon you, and you're like, man, I gotta clamor towards that because I can't handle this on my own. But it's important that you take that I take that time uh, elsewhere, you know what I mean? Even if I'm not flush with the Spirit, i got to take this time here in the morning, take time whenever I can to worship and praise and, and just wear out the path uh, to God uh, from myself so so often that it just becomes muscle memory, you know, spiritual muscle memory to, to, to tread that ground. Um, so that when the time of strife does come, you know, when the, when the great times come, that it's not, and darkness falls, and you can't see the path, uh, metaphorically speaking, but you know what I mean, You've, we've all been in through those, we're just like, I don't know what to turn, I don't know what's going on, nothing's working, everything fails. Uh, that, for me, just happens when I don't run to, run to God, and so I run to Christ's example, and just bury myself in, in Him. So, but in the times of, of, of no stress, of no struggle, of no strife, uh, you gotta work those muscles. You gotta work. You gotta be in training. You have to be in spiritual training. I watched the UFC uh, event, the, the end of the year event that happened a couple days ago, but I finally saw it on the internet yesterday. Awesome fights. Some really pretty awesome fights. At one point, I screamed out loud. I had headphones on at the house um, with a big old whoa. Our team was like, that was really loud. Um, but yeah, but just the same. It's almost like that, except we don't know when our fights are going to come. And our fights are for, for things of the soul, either our own souls or the souls of people around us. You know, sometimes we are called to, to often to save ourselves, you know, through through his spirit. To come to him and he'll save us. Or often we're, sometimes he's got to work through us to help save others. And how awesome is that? That's actually even better. Because it's, it's much more selfless. Um, but we've got to be in training. Just like MMA dudes. Except they know when their fight is, so they actually have somewhat of an advantage. But they're training nonstop. They're not like, oh man, well cool, I'm just, once the fight this is around, I'm going to be ready then, and I'm going to just go fight that fight. No, they got to fight every day. They got to fight every day. They have to They have to train every day. They got to lift every day. They got to run every day. They got to work out all the scenarios so that they, when the time comes, they're going to default to exactly the proper thing. And just in the same way, I need to... I need to train myself. I need to stay trained. I need to stay on task so that when the time comes, the, the default will just be there. It'll just pop right out of me. And I will, I will leave off my own strength and I will, I will run to Christ. And he will sustain me and he will propel me forward and he will guide me to exactly what sort of reversals, submissions, and TKOs uh, he needs me to do. Wham, bam.